Good afternoon. Welcome to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. Good to have you with us on this Tuesday afternoon. And we're live every Tuesday afternoon, right about uh, one o'clock when HCC is in session. And this show, we've got a great lineup for you. Before we get to that, I want to let you know that you can watch us every Tuesday. Also, you can follow us in social media as Houston Community College District. Look for us across all social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Later in the program, I'll tell you how you can download all audio versions of the show as podcasts. Now, nuclear medicine uses small amounts of radioactive material to create images of what's going on inside the body. Sounds pretty cool, huh? Well, we're training them out at Coleman College. HCC's Coleman College for Health Sciences has a program in this vital field. Program Director and Chair for Nuclear Medicine Technology, Vicki Davis-Littleton, joins us now for an overview. Vicki, good to see you again. Hello. Nice Thanks. to see you. Yeah, thanks for being here and want to hear more about this program. First off, I kind of described it very broadly in the open of the show, but tell us exactly what is nuclear medicine technology? Well, nuclear medicine, what we do is we study the function of the organs by injecting small amounts of radioactivity into the patient. Uh, they can also inhale it or digest it. It goes to the organ and then we can see how the organ is malfunctioning. We're also the ones that are responsible for diagnosing uh, cancer. Now, what's the difference between nuclear medicine technology and general, um, you know, uh, other ways of looking at the body from the past? Is it more, uh, you get more of a, a broader view or what is, how, what's the difference between the previous technology and the nuclear medicine technology? Well, nuclear medicine, we use gamma rays. And so uh, we're able, able to actually see the processes in the body. Whereas if, you, if a person was say, taking an X-ray scan, they would be able to see the bone structure or maybe uh, ultrasound, they would be able to use sonic, wave, sonic waves and be able to see it from a different point of view, more anatomy versus the actual processes of uh, the blood maybe perfusing through the, the organ in that process. So that's where we differ. We're able to actually see how that organ is functioning instead of seeing the structure of the organ. Now, how? Um, let's talk about the students attending these classes. How often do they attend the classes? And I imagine they go in in cohorts. Is that correct? Yes, we accept one cohort each year, uh, 25 students, and they're in school Monday through Friday from 8 to 430. We usually have one day that you're probably off a half a day, but you know, most of the time you're in class or in clinic. So in the first two semesters, you're in clinic two days a week. And then after that, you'll be in clinic three days a week and in classes two days a week. So you're, you're with your class all the time. They become family almost. If someone is interested in getting enrolled in this program, um, what are the requirements before they would even uh, be allowed to, to start taking the classes at Coleman? Well, we have five prerequisite courses that our student must do. So we have a, a college chem that they must take, college algebra, AMP one and two, and then a SCIT 1320, which is physics for allied health. That is taught here at Coleman College. The other classes you can, you can take at any of the HCC campuses. Um, also, you are required to have your hepatitis B vaccination. Uh, that usually takes about six to eight months. So you would have to get started on that pretty, you know, pretty soon. Uh, you'll also be required to take the HESI exam, have your MMR, varicella, and chickenpox uh, immunizations also. So all of that is necessary uh, when, you know, before you come into the program, but not before you apply. You can apply at any time. Would the vaccinations be necessary because of the type of patients you'll be dealing with? Is that what the, the thought is there? Yes, it's a requirement of the hospitals that everyone has the hepat hepatitis B vaccination, uh, the MMR, varicella, and chickenpox. Those are the three. Now, there's more, but once you get accepted into the program, we will, you know, then get your tuberculosis, um, you know, to, to make sure that you are, you have the TB uh, red and make sure that you, you don't have that. And then we would also take a flu shot. So those are also uh, requirements, but not until you get into the program. Now, are there levels of certifications and obviously degrees and, and is there an option to continue on? Does there, is there a four-year degree option? How does that work? Well, once you're registered in nuclear medicine, you're registered, you're licensed, and that's across the country. Uh, it's a national registry. 
So the two-year degree and the four-year degree in the nuclear medicine field is basically the same. If, if you went, if you attended a four-year college, you would have 90 hours before going into the nuclear medicine program, and then you would get a bachelor's. And then with us, you would get your prerequisites and then do your nuclear medicine. But either course that, you know, either pathway that you take, it's the same field because a registry is a registry, you're licensed. And so nuclear medicine, once you're licensed with us, you can work anywhere in the country. And what type of uh, income can students expect as they as they uh, move on in this field? And that's where we stand out. In nuclear medicine, our students graduating without experience, the lower end is $33 an hour, medium is around 43, and the high end is around $51 an hour. Right. So our students come out making roughly anywhere to seventy dollars to $90,000 a year starting uh, and that's without experience. And that's pretty incredible for considering yes. uh, if you're going yes. through a two year program to get out immediately. And what's the demand like? I mean, you guys are in the medical center. Could the students stay nearby and go to work? Yes. Uh, HCC has the only nuclear medicine technology program in Houston. There's one located in Galveston and there's one in uh, San Antonio and Dallas. So those are the only four programs in the state of Texas. So we are needed all across Texas, all across the country. We have calls coming in from California, from Florida, from different places, you know, asking for our technologists to actually move to the other areas. But here in Houston, uh, it's plentiful jobs. Our students that just graduated in May, most of our class is already working. And we had 18 uh, actually graduate and most of them are already working right now. And so uh, we usually have a, a 100% placement, job placement rate, which means that we help you get jobs. Um, and so you don't have to uh, just go out on your own. Uh, employers are calling us and they're actually coming in the classroom while you're in your final semester to work out, um, you know, to get you on board with them ahead of time. What's the pass rates of the graduates on the, because uh, it's, it's a national registry from what you're saying, what are the pass rates on that? HCC is at the top. Uh, we, we had actually, uh, I think from 2012 to 2019, uh, we had most of 100% pass rate. That means that everybody who takes the national registry passes on the first time. And so uh, in this last year, I think we had a 96% pass rate. So our pass rates are very high uh, that all of our students who take the exam that they pass on the first try. That's incredible. And how many students are you looking at in each cohort each year? We take 25 students in each cohort. That's incredible. Vicki Davis Littleton, thanks for being here again and uh, bringing us up to speed with the program. We wish you continued success. Keep cranking out those uh, Thank graduates. You. Thank you for having us. All right, when we return, uh, we'll learn about the hands-on work of the nuclear medicine program. We're gonna take a short break. The topic returns in 60 seconds. Sometimes what you need just shows up. Houston Community College has your back. Whether you're knocking out some basics or upping your game for a better job, enroll today for spring classes and frame your future with HCC. For more than a year, we have kept you informed with more than 500 remote episodes. But now we're back, bigger and better, with more news and more guests. Join us live every weekday at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube and on HCC-TV at noon and 5 p.m. You can watch from anywhere. We go where you go. Welcome back to The Topic live this Tuesday afternoon, as we are most Tuesdays at 1 p.m. You can follow us on social media as Houston Community College District and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Later in the program, we'll tell you how you can download audio versions of our show as podcast. 
We're discussing the nuclear medicine program at HCC's Coleman College for Health Sciences. Joining us now is Kathy Shea, clinic coordinator and professor in our program. Kathy, tell us, uh, what classes do the students take in your program? Well, there's a variety of classes that the students will take. Um, in their first semester, they're going to start off with an introduction to nuclear medicine. And in that introduction to nuclear medicine, we uh, will go through radiation safety, We'll go through some um, basic procedures where they learn hands-on uh, how to deal with patients. Then in the first semester, we also have a patient care class where we go through medical terminology, ethics, and also we teach our students how to start an IV. That's just in the first semester. Then, and, and then of course, we also have clinic where the students go to the hospitals and they get hands-on um, experience from two weeks after starting the program. We jump to our second semester and we get into other classes such as radiopharmacy, radiochemistry. We get into um, instrumentation and clinic again. Of course, the clinic classes go throughout the whole program. So each semester, the students will be rotating through one of the various clinics or hospitals, getting hands-on experience. And then in the summer, we usually dive um, dive a little bit more deeply into different procedures. We go into the uh, second year and the second year we deal with methodology, which again is more procedures and clinic. And then our last semester is an internship. And the internship, what we do is it's a, it's a semester long review. And in that we cover everything that we covered before to, to refresh their memories so that when they take their boards, um, they're not having to think back five semesters because we've covered it again. Tell us more about the clinical experience. Where will the students actually be working? Is it clinics, doctors, offices, hospitals, a mixture of all? Well, if the student is going to work in a doctor's office, it's usually doing cardiology. That it seems to be the, um, the procedure of choice or the procedures of choice in doctor's offices. But when they're in um, outpatient clinics or when they're in hospitals, then um, they're doing a, a wide variety of procedures because of where they're located. What is, where is the highest demand? Is it in the clinics? And, and I mean, where do you see most students getting placed? Well, here in the medical center in Houston, this is the world's largest medical center. So we're very, very lucky because we have a lot of hospitals right here in the Houston area. We do have clinics also, but the clinics are basically outpatient clinics. So I'd say the highest demand is going to be hospitals because we have so many of them. But, um, but in the outpatient clinics, then they're usually more of a specialty type clinic. Vicki had mentioned that a number of students want to work in uh, our, our, our Students, once you pass your um, board exams, you could work anywhere in the United States, and you have a number of clinics and places from you know outside of Texas calling you. Do you find students wanting to go and work outside of Texas? Well, I find that um, if a student is established here in Houston, very often they like to stay, you know, because this is where their family is, or this is where they bought a house, or something like that. But not only are hospitals and clinics wanting um, permanent nuclear medicine technologists to travel to their location and establish residency there. But there is also an opportunity to become what's called a traveling tech. And a traveling tech is someone who's going to go to a hospital or a clinic for a, um, a period of time, like uh, maybe eight weeks or 13 weeks. Then they'll work at that clinic, uh, maybe covering somebody who's out sick or on an extended leave for some reason. And then when they're done with that, that contract, that 13 week contract or however long, then um, they're able to then go to the next contract. So it gives them an opportunity basically to see the country <clears throat> and also see areas that they wouldn't normally travel to. I mean, that sounds fascinating. You get a chance to go on the road and, and work in different locations. If you're not sure if you're, if you don't like the city, you get a different city in 13 weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's true. It is, it's a fascinating experience and it's also a very highly paid. So when a traveling tech is going to the different facilities around the country, um, they're typically paid higher than what they would be paid if they were a permanent technologist at that, 
facility. What skills do students learn beyond just the mechanics of how to do the procedures? You went through them a little bit, but tell us other skills that are included in the program. Well, when we're doing nuclear medicine, um, of course, radiation safety is very, very high, you know, because we want all of our students, all of our technologists to be safe when they're working with radiation. So we teach them how to deal with that. So in doing that, they're able to also work not only with the patients, but they work with the different equipment, doing different um, quality control tests to make sure that all the equipment is you know, up to standard and everything. Because we don't want to take any picture of a patient, any image of a patient, and have there be something wrong with the camera or have there be something wrong with how the dose was made or things like that. So we're always checking every single day, our students and our technologists check all the different equipment to make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to work each day. And once again, the, the pass rates are extremely high for HCC. Um, obviously that says a lot about the training and the staff that you guys work with. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. We do take pride in our ability to make our students understand what the information they need to know. So if a student is struggling, uh, we take the time. We take the time to work with them. We give them the opportunity to either come to a, like an open lab where we can go over whatever it is that they're struggling with, or if they need one-on-one -on -one instruction, <clears throat> we take the time to go ahead and, uh, and set that up to make sure that each student is receiving what they need to succeed. Kathy Shape, clinic coordinator at Coleman College for the nuclear uh, medicine program. We really appreciate you being here this afternoon, shedding some more light on the subject. Continued success to you. Thank you very much. All right, we're gonna take a short break. When we return, we'll meet up with one of the graduates and talk about their story. That's coming up. The topic returns in 60 seconds. Sometimes what you need just shows up. Houston Community College has your back. Whether you're knocking out some basics or up in your game for a better job, enroll today for spring classes and frame your future with HCC. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Things could be stranger, but I don't know how. I'm going through changes, through all of the strangeness. I'm going through changes now. Welcome back to The Topic. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we're live every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Catch us on Facebook Live and also YouTube. Look for us in social media as Houston Community College District, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You get notifications when programs like this one pop up. Plus, you can download all audio versions of our shows as podcasts. They're free. Visit hccs.edu slash podcast for your downloads. We're discussing the nuclear medicine program at HCC's Coleman College of Health Sciences. Join us now is Wesley Benethin, a program graduate now working in the field. Wesley, thanks for being here this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about, first off, what made you want to pursue nuclear medicine technology? Did you know a lot about the field before you got into it? And what, which, what uh, intrigued you about it? Uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, it was a very quick decision for me. I did not know anything about the nuclear medicine field until about six months before I attended the program. Uh, I lost my job due to COVID at the time. I was uh, looking to go into something radiology related, and I spoke to an echo tech that my dad worked with. He told me about nuclear medicine and then uh, had me check out the field. And as soon as I read about it, I was like, that sounds super interesting, and that's what I've got to do. If you don't mind me asking, what type of field were you in during COVID, and uh, how long had you been in that field? 
Um, so uh, I was working in insurance, actually, uh, and I'd been there for about a, a year and a half, two years. Um, I was actually doing quite well. I was a, a managing agent, had agents under me, had a whole team, and then COVID hit and it all kind of got wiped. So I was definitely looking for stability and the medical field was an area where you can always find that. So you were making a complete switch in careers going into something brand new. Yes. I went from, uh, you know, speaking with clients every day and holding meetings to actually working one-on-one with patients, handling radioactive doses and the such. Let's talk about the program itself. Um, how did you find it? Did you find it very tough, um, challenging? Uh, would you, do you have any struggles? What was it about? Um, so it was... Uh, I wouldn't say it was an easy program. Um, it, it is a very serious program because what we do is very important and safety is a huge thing, especially in the medical field and especially with radiation. Um, so there is a lot uh, that uh, needs to be taken very seriously. Um, and the, the professors did a really good job about driving that home. Um, it, it was uh, some difficult material at times, uh, but there was always a support structure. The program was uh, designed very well to, uh, like Miss uh, Shade said earlier, uh, if we needed help with anything, we could come in and we could speak with them one-on-one -on, -one on a certain topic. Uh, we had open labs where we could all get together. Um, and then we all, uh, as students, we found it very helpful to actually form uh, study groups. What did you like the most about Coleman College? Um, I like that for one, I mean, if I'm perfectly honest, you know, it being uh, part of the Houston Community College, it was not an expensive degree to go back for. Sure. Um, it came in at a very affordable uh, level for me, which was big because, I, like I said, I just lost my and like I was able to go through and now, you know, I'm Wesley, are you still there? We might have lost you for a second. Oh, I am still here. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah, I can. Tell us a bit about where you're working right now and uh, what does your normal day look like? Okay, um, so right now I'm working at Oncology Consultants down in the Med Center. Um, I'm actually a, a couple blocks away from the Coleman College itself. Uh, and uh, I'm a PET CT technologist over here. So uh, PET is a specialty within the nuclear medicine field. Um, and what I do is I do scans for oncology patients or patients that uh, have been diagnosed with cancer or seeking a diagnosis for cancer. Um, and we eat, uh, can either diagnose that cancer or we can also do staging. So we can see how well a patient is uh, reacting to their therapies that they're on. So whether it's chemo or radiation therapy, we can see how well that treatment's going and if we need to vary that. I mean, it's a vital part of somebody's life. It could be life-changing one way or another, whether they get a cancer diagnosis or they're, they're told that the cancer's cleared up. I mean, it's some, some pretty serious stuff. You, I imagine you find that rewarding. Yes, actually, um, uh, I have a history of cancer in my family. So it is it, it's something that I've been through personally with family members. Uh, so I, I'm aware of the impact that I make and that actually, it makes me look forward to coming into work every day, actually. I know when I'm dealing with these patients that I'm making a difference. Wes, let me ask you this. If someone was thinking of taking this program at Coleman, enrolling in it, uh, maybe they were facing a situation like yours where they've got to change careers, uh, what would be your advice to them? Um, so the first thing is I would, uh, I know when I was looking at the program, uh, when I had questions, but I actually reached out to Ms. Vicky directly. Um, she was able to answer a lot of the questions I had at the beginning. Um, I would highly recommend making that jump to this program because like I said, I, I went from, you know, not knowing anything, you know, for the future, like everything was up in the air. And then like, I, it was very easy to get my feet back under me once I made the decision to enroll. Wesley, we wish you the best of luck, continued success with uh, moving on in your career. And thanks for sharing your story and encouraging our future students. Thank you.
All right. Thanks for joining us on the topic today. For more information on Coleman Coleman College's nuclear medicine program, we're going to have some links in our post. I'm Todd Duplantis. We will be back live next week. Have a great one.